This video is part one of two videos for clinical instructor training. A clinical instructor is a university employee who will be going with students on rotation. This person will have regular interaction with patients and because of this, the hospital requires them to upload their compliance information and complete their onboarding requirements in My Clinical Exchange alongside their students. In this video, you will learn how to log into your My Clinical Exchange account, the basics of navigating the site, where to view students and their upcoming rotations, and how to do attendance tracking and complete assessments against the students you oversee. Please be sure to watch our second video titled My Clinical Exchange Instructor Personal Requirements to learn how to complete your compliance checklist, paperwork, modules, and exams as required by your rotational hospital. To start, you will need to log into My Clinical Exchange. Please make sure you are using Google Chrome or Firefox and go to www.myclinicalexchange.com. This will take you to our landing page. Click on the school staff login here. The system will ask you for a login ID and a password. Your login ID should be your university issued email address from your university. If you work at multiple universities and are not sure which email address to use, or if you think a personal email address was used to set up your account, please email us at support at myclinicalexchange.com for assistance. Click on Forgot Password. The system will again ask for that login ID, which is your email address. Next, you will need to enter the security code here into the box at the bottom. If you can't read the security code, click the refresh button to the right. Once you have filled in your email and the security code, click on email password. This will prompt the platform to send a temporary password to this inbox. You can then take that password, go back to our school login page, fill in both fields and get signed in. Once you sign in, you'll be on your home page. So let's take a quick walk through what you're seeing. Some of you will have both instructor and coordinator access, and therefore your page will be much busier. You can immediately tell which access level you have by looking at the top left corner. If you have instructor only access, you will see one menu here titled My Views. If you have both coordinator and instructor access, you will have four menus, Rotation, Administration, Reports, and then My Views. With Coordinator Access, we highly recommend you attend Coordinator Training as well. You can email us at support at myclinicalexchange.com for dates and times. However, this video is geared specifically for those who are instructors, so we will be focusing on the My Views menu and the traditional layout of the instructor page. If you are both coordinator and instructor, some information will not appear for you in the exact same place, but I will notate those as we go along. First, let's discuss the layout of the home page and the basics of navigating the site. As mentioned, at the top left, there is a My Views menu where you can access your different requirements such as your exams, modules, compliance checklist. You can see a history of rotations as well as access a list of rotation students. On the top right, there are some navigation icons. If you click the orange house button, that will bring you back here to your home page. The bell with the red number is a link to your notifications from the hospital. The help pages are here in the green question mark. Next, the cogwheel icon is the link to your account settings page. Let's click on this to see how to update our personal account settings. On this page, you can update your contact information, update your email preferences, change your password, and also change your security questions. Let's take a closer look at the email settings that exist in My Clinical Exchange. These are helpful so you do not have to log into the site every day and check on things. For many of the items that concern you, there is probably an auto email for it. I will now pull up a list of the auto emails and their descriptions if you'd like to take a moment to pause this video and review them. For any of the in items of interest where you'd like to receive an email notification, put a check mark in the box on the far right side and then click Save My Email Preference Settings. 
The last icon on our homepage is this green door with an arrow pointing out. This is your logout button. Whenever you are done using My Clinical Exchange or going to step away from your computer, make sure to securely log out of the site. Let's return to our homepage and finish reviewing the information. If you have instructor only access, you should see a grid with details about the rotations and students you've been assigned to. If your homepage is blank, please contact your university coordinator and let them know that they need to assign you to a rotation in My Clinical Exchange. If you have both coordinator and instructor access, you can get to this same grid by clicking on My Views and then selecting My Rotation Students. The default setting is to show only students for current and upcoming rotations. Once a rotation is over, that student or group of students will disappear off your home page. If you want to see those students again, click on the All radio button at the top. You can also email students from this grid. Just put a check mark box to the left of the student's name and click on Email Notification. MCE will provide a pop-up window where you may email students directly from the system. On the bottom left is your My Alert Center, which outlines all of your requirements for an upcoming rotation. On the bottom right is a list of your current and upcoming rotations. Neither of these two sections will appear for those who have coordinator access, since you can use the Rotation Manager tool instead. Please see our next video on completing personal requirements for more details on these two sections. During the course of a student's rotation, you may be asked to take attendance for the student. The default setting is that My Clinical Exchange will automatically mark attendance, but some universities or hospitals may have the auto attendance function off. If that is the case, they will let you know to log into My Clinical Exchange and mark attendance for a student. There are two ways to mark attendance for a student. First, you can click on the Approve Daily Attendance. This is best if you'd like to mark attendance as you go, rather than trying to remember at the end of the rotation what days each student came. Second, you can click on the small calendar icon to the left of each student's name to see their full schedule laid out, like a calendar, and then mark attendance from there. Let's start with how to approve daily attendance. Please note that if you have both instructor and coordinator access, you would need to navigate to the screen by going to My Views and clicking on My Rotation Students, and then your Approve Daily Attendance button will appear. At the top left, you'll note that today's date is filled in. You can click on the date and search for a previous date if you'd like to make sure you've tracked attendance for that date. However, if you try to select a future date, you're going to notice that the page is blank because you cannot mark attendance in advance. To select a date, choose from the calendar and then click the yellow magnifying glass. Students will be listed down the left side of the page. The facility they were at for their rotation will be listed next, along with their shift location. Next is a column that says rotation hours. In this area, MCE will pre-fill in the expected number of hours the student should have been on rotation for this date. You can click into this text box and override the hours. Let's say that a student had makeup hours to complete, so they stayed late, and another student simply didn't show up. In that case, I would enter zero for today's attendance. The approved column shows whether or not I have approved attendance yet for this student for this date. At this point, I have not yet clicked the Update Attendance button, so my column is blank. The Status dropdown will allow me to add more details about why a student had amended hours on this particular date. The last column allows you to add more details about the student's attendance status if you wish. Once I am done marking my daily attendance, I click the yellow Update Attendance, and then I will see a Yes in the Approved column. Let's say, a week from now, I cannot remember if I actually marked attendance on this date. If I search using my calendar and return to this page, when I see the Yes in the Approved column, I will know I have already marked attendance for this set of students on this date. I can click close to return to my home page. 
The other way to mark attendance is to pull up a calendar view of the student's schedule and mark attendance by each week. If you have both instructor and coordinator access, you can also get to this. You would find the student you'd like to mark attendance for, and on the far right, there's an attendance column which displays the number of hours approved over the total number of hours scheduled. Click on this number to be navigated to the attendance by calendar view for the student. For those of you with instructor-only access, you would simply click on the calendar icon to the left of the student's name. On the student attendance page, you will see the student's name listed at the top left corner. Select one of the radio buttons across the bottom to see the different attendance days laid out. The default setting is to show unapproved days, or days that need your sign-off. You can toggle to see all approved days or all days in the calendar. All days will show all that the student has been scheduled for in the rotation up until today's date. Just like approving daily attendance, you cannot mark attendance past today's date. The approved days shows only days that we have consented that the student did show up for their rotation, which at the current moment is the same as all days. If you need to make a change to the student's hours, you would click into the text box on the particular date you'd like to update. Let's say today the student had to leave early, so they actually didn't do eight and a half, they did seven and a half, which I was not expecting. So I will change the hours in the Friday box and then click approve. When you're all done, you can click close to return to the home page. The last topic for this video is the ability to complete an assessment about a student at the end of their rotation. You will note towards the end of the student's rotation, a small icon will appear to the left of their name which looks like a numbered paper. You can click on this icon to be directed to a new page which displays the assessment. Click the drop down box at the top to see if there are other assessments listed. In this case, I have two, the clinical instructor assessment of rotation and the assessment of the student so I will need to make sure that I complete both assessments. The assessment and question statements are listed down the left side of the page. Click the radio button that best describes your response to the question or statement. You can also manually enter the number in the blank text box, and then the appropriate radio button will automatically highlight. Add comments in the comment box if you'd like, or if the assessment or question specifically asks you to leave a comment. Click Save at any point to save your changes. This will not submit the assessment. If you have more than one assessment in the drop-down box at the top of the page, be sure to fill out your first assessment and click Save, then go on to the second assessment. Fill out the questions on the second assessment page, and when you are all done and have saved both assessments, you may then click the Assessment Complete button to submit both of these to the hospital or university. This concludes our first training for the instructor. If you have any further questions or concerns, please contact support at myclinicalexchange.com. That's support at myclinicalexchange.com.